I really like these knives and forks. Tomato. So today we are at a restaurant. We are going to be talking to the chefs to find out about some everyday goodness in our kitchens that we might be missing out on. Things like stale bread, squashed tomatoes, vegetable peelings, all the extra bits that normally end up being thrown in the bin. And when you really think about it, when did we decide that this should look like this without using this? Or that this would be better off looking like this? Or this? So let's meet our chef. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, first? I'm Hussein. I'm one of the cooks here at Spring. Mm -hmm. And I've been here about a year and a half. So what are we going to make today, Chef? Um, we're going to make um, a soup, Italian soup, called aqua cotta. And it basically means cooked water. And it's a really basic soup based upon stale bread, which is something everyone has. The other ingredients that I had today from my morning's prep that I couldn't really use. Mm -hmm. This is a ruby char, beautiful flavors there. Kale, turnip tops, which a little bit yellow, but absolutely fine. And this is a cavallonero, which is like a Tuscan black cabbage. For this soup, we're gonna make a sofrito, which is like a base of onions and garlic that's gonna give the, the soup some sort of foundations. So otherwise, it's just water and bread. Bit of olive oil in the pan. Just adding a little bit of onion. That's probably a quarter of an onion. You could add leek, you could add shallots. I'm gonna add some pancetta. A little bit of rosemary. I'm going to start building the soup now. This is the sourdough we use in the restaurant. So I'm just going to add a little bit of bread to this. Crusts and all, no matter. You can add as much bread as you want. Like if it's sourdough that's relatively sturdy, you know it'll, it'll hold up, uh, even if it's not that stale. But you probably don't want to be doing this with like white sliced pan. And uh, these are something probably everyone has in the fridge, which are like sort of slightly soft tomatoes. They're not rotten at all, they're just bruised. Like a bruised banana is not like a rotten banana. Yeah, just throwing in, and there's no particular order to the way you add ingredients. So the, only, the only advice I would give is to add the onions first. Things are becoming a bit wetter here. And to this now, I'm just gonna add my kale, my char, a little bit of this uh, Pablo Nero I talked about, this Tuscan black. Cabbage. There's nothing particularly complex here. And then we're going to add the most important ingredient next to the bread, which is the water, um, which gives it the name aqua cotta, cooked water. Not flooded with water, because remember there's no stock here. So what I'm going to do here is just bring this up to a sim boil and then bring it down to a simmer. The kale needs about two or three minutes at a simmer to cook. Really important thing when you're cooking, personally, is to season as you go. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. This is, I want to put a little bit of Parmesan on top because I think that that's something that everyone would recognize. I'm going to have a little bit of Parmesan in the end of your fridge. In fact, if I was really clever, I could put that Parmesan rind in a bit of water beforehand and just let it boil for a while. And that could be the stock I added instead of water. It's not even about just not wasting it. It's about making something even tastier. Let me have a taste. A bit more salt. I think I'll add a little bit of black pepper as well. Pepper and tomatoes go, go, go really well together, so why not? So I'll just add a few drops of this red wine vinegar. Yeah, I guess we're going to plate up. I'm just going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on there. And the one bit of luxury, just nice, just nice olive oil. This is really, really fresh. Quite a bit of that on. Probably more than you used to. For people cooking at home who might have bits and pieces like this, like what we've done in the soup, um, that they might normally throw away, what would your advice be for something like potato peel, for instance? Yeah, I mean, potato peel is a, a good example. If you're making mash and you're peeling your potatoes, you, you can just add the skins to the mash. Mm. Uh, tastes great. That you, you, there's lots of times when you don't even have to peel the potatoes. It saves you the work and the waste. So if you're if you're doing chips, you don't have to peel them. If you're you know sauteing, boiling them or sauteing them, there's no need to peel them at all. Mm -hmm. But if you are, if you do want them peeled and you just you've made your mash and it's, do, it's all done and you have this bunch of peel there, fry them, make mm -hmm. little kind of crisps out of them. There is a lot of like actual really good stuff in the in the in the skin of vegetables and 
and in fruit as well that it actually makes it easier to digest mm -hmm. fiber and things like that and another thing so like if i'm at home and i've got a parsnip yeah. I would normally like top and tail it. Yeah. Can you do anything with those bits at the end? Yeah, you could definitely like chop it up and add it to a soup. Mm -hmm. You could, if it was a carrot, people top and tail carrots all the time, you could definitely add that to a stock by adding these kind of trimmings. Just when you're frying down onions for, say, a pasta sauce, or even in a stir fry, you just add a little bit of sliced uh, carrot to it that you had left over. You can just throw it all in, yeah, make totally it magic. It's like, I don't know, if you think of it, thinking of it as kind of like, of just good home economics, you know. Like, so today is quite a cold day. Yeah. We're really miserable, so we made a soup, <laughs> and that went down well. But if it's the height of summer and you have stale bread, uh, you might want to make um, basically that, but dry, and it's mm. like a panzanella. Mm. So panzanella, the simplest, would just be like, usually like onion, tomato, bread, uh, olive oil, and vinegar. Another thing you can do is toast the bread, mm -hmm. make croutons out of it. Add it to a gratin, maybe. You could like, so if you, you just put What like, is a gratin? A gratin? I'm sorry. Like, you know when you make like uh, dauphinoise potatoes? Yes. You know, something like that. It's like basically anything that goes kind of crispy on the top. Cool. Uh, so you could probably, you could probably make a, you know, a white sauce, like a bechamel. Mm -hmm. Add a bit of bread to that, some random uh, like nice green veg, like cabbage, and just kind of roast it in the oven with some cheese. Really nice. What I think I always really value to have in the kitchen is base ingredients that are really good. Mm and that will elevate something from being mundane to being actually really delicious. So that's like, you, you can't really make a really nice, delicious, dissatisfying, like rustic soup like that yeah. without at least one thing in it that's really nice and satisfying and delicious. So that was in this case, the olive oil. And that's what something I'd always have in my kitchen is like really nice olive oil. Mm -hmm. And another thing I'd always have is, you know, nice butter. Uh, good salt. I think once you've got those down, making good food out of anything becomes actually a lot, a lot easier. You just need your base kind of yeah. ingredients. Yeah, I, well, I think it's nice to have them. If you can afford them, it's nice to have them. And to be honest, if you are reusing stuff more, you can actually tend to afford mm -hmm. buying nicer base ingredients. So, extra vitamins, less waste, and cooking like a pro, what's not to love? Next time you are peeling, topping, tailing, or throwing stuff in the bin, why don't you try out some of the recipes that I will put in the description below. And if you've got any questions for our chef, just let me know. I would really like to know what you guys are cooking at home, so if you're sitting on a gold mine of ideas that is gonna help me use up some of the waste in my kitchen, please spill your beans in the comments below. Our resident foodie, Tessa, is gonna be picking the best one out to feature on our website, and we'll be sending a special prize. Spoilers, it's a recipe book.